I tell you, I don't know what it's like at your house, but if you look around my house, you can tell it's not normal. Matter of fact, if you looked around this house right now, I need to do some work. <laughs> Praise the Lord. One of the things that I enjoy about the ministry that God has given me at this time is that I get the opportunity to not only write, develop, encourage, exhort the Biblical Christian Network, uh, seven different networks, basically eight or nine of them now, that have blogs and websites and news services and inspirational pictures and videos and, boy, you name it, we're doing it. <laughs> Prophecy, huge prophecy sites. Biblical Prophecy Today, uh, Prophecy Research and Development, uh, Biblical Prophecy Teaching, I think it's called. I forget now. But the point being is that in doing those things, I also get the opportunity to do housework. Yeah! Woohoo! I get to do toilet cleaning <laughs> I know how to iron and so if you ever saw me as a journeyman boilermaker you'd realize hey you know what the guy knows how to work <laughs> it's not a man thing it's not a woman thing it's not a freedom thing it's not a whatever thing it's just work <laughs> so in everything you know, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And as you go through your day, you know, learn to laugh a lot. You know, learn to enjoy it. You know, one of the things that we're going to do with this camera is that we're going to begin to put little facial features and things that are kind of goofy to add some fun, you know, to your existence. You know, because sometimes people take life a little too seriously, you know. So what? You're facing death. What are you going to do? Live forever? Ha! <laughs> Oh, bummer, man. I'm going to die and go to be with Jesus. Shucks. <laughs> I mean, get a grip on it. So what? The worst thing that we go through as Christians is we suffer now. <laughs> Boy. Shame and distress. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Psalm 34, 1, 4, and 5. See, my children, that even in distress, the first step is praise. Before you cry in your distress, bless the Lord. Even when trouble comes and seems to overwhelm you, just bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. For God is so good, hallelujah. God is so good, hallelujah. God is so good, he's so good to me. Okay. Maybe that's a little too much. Maybe you don't feel like blessing the Lord, oh my soul. There's a psalm that David wrote that says, I'm trying to think how it goes. It's like, wow, my brain went blank. It's, fear not for I shall yet praise him. And it, it ends with, it begins with, I'm trying to think if it's bless the Lord, oh my soul. No. Fear not for I show you a praise. The point being is that in it, David describes praising the Lord and that your soul doesn't feel like it, meaning your emotions may not feel like going there or wanting to bless the Lord, but to not fear that because even though you don't feel like it, you shall yet praise him. So. If you can't, you know, if you're laying in a hospital bed, and I've been there, and I've had IVs in my... I don't know if you can see any of these markings on my chest. There's some scars here beneath all the hair. <laughs> Do 
did he say hair? <laughs> well, don't go there. But the point is, is that I have had, you know, IVs in my heart, you know, that I had a central line eh, three or four times and have had to, you know, be interlipids, you know, and we'll put weight on intravenously. So it's kind of hard sometimes, you know, to just sit there and go, well, hey, praise the Lord. Or is it? Uh-oh. What did he do? Well, you know, I had this IV pole, you know, that was like, you know, standing up, you know, and I had a machine that was pumping, you know, stuff into my heart. And I had some bags on it that, you know, I had an IV on my, my arm, you know, that was putting fluids in my arm, you know, and I was getting intralipids, you know, and uh, so I went running, you know, and jumped on my pole because, you know, it's one of those like thigh pods, you know, it's got those all the different angles, you know, so that you can kind of like, you know, and so I jump on the IV pole and I'm at uh, Long Beach Veterans Hospital, you know, and so I jump on the pole and I'm riding it and all of a sudden it hits something, a rock or something, and knocked it over and smashed the, the central line that was in my heart, you know, and knocked over the tube because they were using glass in those days. And so I got junk all over the place and, oh my God, nurse happened to be coming by and she chewed me out. And needless to say, I lived. <laughs> And I didn't go riding on IV poles anymore. So maybe it is kind of hard if you're laying in a hospital bed to rejoice in the Lord always. Maybe it is kind of hard to feel like, you know, if you have arthritis, you know, or you have gout or you have some disease that's afflicting you, that your soul doesn't feel like praising the Lord. But bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me that my heart rejoiced because fear not for I shall yet praise him and you shall praise the Lord whether it be now in this body that maybe is diseased and maybe you're suffering or whether it be you've got the joy 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 down in my heart yay down in my heart yay down in my heart yay or you're just kind of like you know eh, I don't feel so much like joy today I think I'll just do peace <laughs> okay then just accept the fact that whatsoever state you are there in, to be content with God who has put you and allowed you in the state you're in to participate with him in revealing himself to you as you are maybe suffering. That is my divine order of approach. Observe this always, that bless the Lord, O my soul. You may find cause for thankfulness and then you can bless and thank him for what you've been through. You have thus established a line of communication between yourself and me. Along that line, let your cry of distress follow. So see, the first step is praise, praise the Lord. Thus you will find I do my part and deliverance will be sure. Oh, the gladness of heart, lightened you will be, the burden rolled away as the result of looking to me. Shame and distress will be lifted too. That is always the second step. First, right with me, then you will be righted too in the eyes of men. You know, that interesting part about God calling is there's a whole idea of the shame and distress. And I want to talk about that just for a moment because Christians nowadays have a better idea of what shame can do and distress where they didn't know basically in my day, because I, I was actually in a town where the first handicapped person uh, that walked out on the street, you know, in a wheelchair was told, you know, to go back into the closet and die so that the city council wouldn't have to deal with those kind of people. Pretty weird, huh? It hasn't been that long ago that, you know, people even wrote bastard on birth certificates. I mean, the world is changing, but it hasn't always been this way, you know, where it's kind of like, understanding where people are coming from that we accept the quadriplegic paraplegic or a person with a disability as much as we think we do or we did but there is a shame that is still there and present sometimes for born-again christians who have a disability because you see at my time when i was a jesus freak 
Jesus Gypsy, Freak, whatever. Back in the Jesus movement, it was still presumed for some reason that once you got saved, God would miraculously heal you of all your diseases and take away all your anxieties and all your problems and they'd all disappear and you'd be looking blonde haired, blue eyed. No, <laughs> looking like whatever you're looking like, long hair, short hair, whatever, shirt, shoot, shirt and ties, suits and ties, that Christians didn't get sick. Christians didn't get diseases. Christians weren't afflicted, you know, that somehow they were always healed. And they certainly didn't have disabilities. Well, before all this modern day, you know, acceptance of disabled people came along. Oh, I know, physically challenged, whatever you want to call it. I wound up with an ostomy, which means I have a bag on my side. And there are times where, because I was so ornery and so downright, you know, frustrated, man, I'd have accidents as an adult. And there was a lot of shame and suffering in that, that I had to go through in order to bring down my ego, maybe, or maybe to allow other people to bring theirs down so that they could comfort me in my distress. Because you see, the body of Christ was not so forgiving and so loving as it is today. Is it today? <laughs> oh boy, maybe. But in my day, oh, you know, it was like, we don't know what to do, so don't look. Don't talk to them. They might have sin in their life. They have sin in their life. <gasps> Unconfessed sin. <gasps> That's what's causing it to them. Oh, the devil got them. They must have the devil in them. They're possessed. They're not rich. Oh, we can't deal with them. Oh, they're poor. We can't deal with them. They have an ostomy. Can't deal with them. They went through a divorce. <gasps> can't deal with them. What can't you deal with? Jesus died for you. You can deal with everything. And the shame that you might feel for whatever you're going through right now, doesn't matter what it is, whether you be a woman on a menstrual cycle for the first time, as young women learn, you know, and they kind of like have to deal with this whole, you know, like new body thing going on. Like, man, once a month I got to deal with this. Or whether you're old and you're like in your 50s and going through menopause and, oh my God, I got to go through this? Hot sweats. Or whether you're male menopause and you're going through it and you go, I can't deal with this. And you divorce or you get rid of the wife of your youth because you don't want to deal with it. Jesus loves you. Jesus is with you. And Jesus takes away your shame. You know why? Because I'm going to share something with you that most people don't talk much about. You see, when they were crucified in Jerusalem, they were crucified stark naked. They didn't wrap them in swaddling clothes. They didn't wrap some little wrap around. I'm sorry. They crucified them nude. As a matter of fact, they used to race in Jerusalem in the Colosseum that was built there naked. And there were Jews at the time that would even go out of their way to cut themselves so that they would look like they were not circumcised because those that were racing in the Olympics in those days in Jerusalem, in Israel, at that time, they, well, maybe on the outskirts of Jerusalem, but anyways, they would mutilate themselves so that they could compete. So you see, parts of your history may not have been included, especially in Christianity, that Jesus died bearing the shame. And the shame that he went through wasn't just the cross. It was the fact that he was laid there and died stark naked. Stark naked. And that's the reality of the crucifixion. They didn't cover him up. No, if anything, they made fun of him. Spit on him. And in the end, they died. And so there's a great shame that Jesus endured. That he knows what you're going through. If you too have been ashamed of something about yourself, whether it be your speech, your facial, your inner ego of some way that something on the outside, like an ostomy or something, causes you great shame or remorse. Can I tell you that Jesus knows? 
He doesn't care. Your body is going to be gone. But Jesus will always be there. Rejoice in the Lord always. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. For what you were suffering, he has been through. Yes, I know. When you're handicapped, you don't think so. But I can tell you this. Oh, yes, he has. Because as he lives in you, he's going through it with you even as you're going through it with him.